We're going to make a squid lure today. If you guys are new to my channel, I make my own 3D printed fishing lures that you guys can use yourselves. Now the idea for this video was a simple one. From the fluke to the giant bluefin tuna, nothing can resist that sweet, sweet calamar. So we're just going to make a little squid lure. Now I wanted something relatively small, so I just took a picture of a squid and modeled it out. I think it's like three inches or something like that. This is designed for inshore saltwater, so fluke, redfish, any of that stuff should be great. Albies, bonita, I'm sure it would work good in other places too. I just snow around by me. It's mainly fluke and albies that are going to hit this. All I did was take a picture of a squid I found off the internet and draw out the outline of it. I used the revolve tool to make it into a circle. Well, I guess it's not really a circle. It's a cylinder. Same thing. I cut out an eye socket in and threw some fins on the top. Now for the tentacles, we had to do something a little bit different. Tennis balls. That's tentacles. I could have made fully 3D tentacles like on a normal squid, how they would actually look, but that would be kind of hard to implement on a mold. It's definitely doable. I'd like to revisit it in the future on maybe a more realistic design. But for now, I just went with the same design I used on my previous tube mold. All it is is what's called a spline. It's just this little cylinder you stick in the end of the mold and it's got cutouts for the legs. So the plastic will flow into the main squid body and then flow into that cylinder area and fill in those gaps, making the skirt. In this case, it would be the legs. So that's it for the design portion. I just threw this into my slicer and printed it out on my Anycubic Photon Mono out of Sariatek Sculpt. And I will see you guys when that's done printing. All right, so our squid mold is now complete. Uh, there's not too much to say about it. It's just a normal three cavity squid mold. So like all my other molds, you're gonna need both halves and there's one extra tool for this mold. That's gonna be the spline. Now, if you guys have shot my tube mold before, this is the same thing. Just a rod with these little grooves in there and that's what's gonna make the skirt. So these just fit right inside the mold like so. So you're gonna need three of these obviously since it's a three cavity mold. So the only issue with these little splines is they're gonna be different for every printer. If for some reason it doesn't fit for you guys, just play around with the scale tool in your slicer. I mean, it's not like these things take much money or time to make. Just until you get a good fit. It took me a couple tries to get this right for my printer. We're going to be using some just fluorescent pink remelt for this. I think it's going to be a good color for the squid. So I'm just going to get that started heating up now and I'm going to put this mold together. We're also going to be reshooting our grub mold at the same time just because fluke go through these like Paula Deen goes through butter. This should be cooled off enough now. Good enough. All right, so we're going to draw this up. And we're going to inject our squid mold first. And hold that for a couple more seconds. And then we'll go right to our grub. Top that off. And I will see you guys when that is all cooled up. All right, this should be all hardened up now. So we are going to crack this bad boy open. This is what it looks like all done. So I'm going to pull these apart. The skirt can be a tad difficult to get out. And sometimes you get these little nubbins on the end. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm just going to run a razor blade across that to cut that off. All right, so that's what that looks like. We are going to move on to our next color now. So I have this white with black flake that I think is going to look very good on this squid lure. A little Dalmatian action there. So we're going to try that next. This should be pretty good. Yep. We're going to use our mini injector just because we're just doing this one mold. Hold our pressure, top it off, and we're good. 
All right, while we're waiting for this to cool off, I'm going to come up with a new color I can make with the dyes I have. Now this is gonna be primarily used for fluke, for me at least. So I'm just gonna go, you know, Google some good fluke colors and we'll figure it out from there. All right, this should be hard enough now. Time to crack it open. Same deal as last time, just white. All right, so this is what we have, that white Dalmatian color. So I'm going to put this mold back together and we are going to make a new orange color because there's lots of people using that on Google. I've seen it a lot before. So I'm going to mix up my own orange creation because I don't have any orange dye. We're going to inject this mold again and we're going to shoot the uh, fluke rub again too with that. So our plastic is now cooked. If you guys paid attention in um, uh, school, you would know that yellow and red make orange now i don't have yellow i have chartreuse which is basically yellow so we're going to try that with some red to make our orange color now i'm really hoping this doesn't make brown but we'll see all right that's definitely not orange we'll try some more chartreuse that's brown all right, so it's not exactly what I was going for, but um, all right, when I said orange, I lied. We're going to make our own new color now because that didn't work out as I wanted, really. So this is almost like a blood reddish. I added some pearlescent purple to it. And uh, yeah, we'll throw some flake in there for good measure. I don't really know what we're going to call this color, but uh, yeah, that's what we made. All right, so we are... Our Pretty close to a good shooting temperature. We're actually a little low, but I'm gonna go for it anyway. We'll see how this works. I mean, this is more of a watermelon color, I guess. It actually looks pretty good. I just don't know about salt water. This would definitely be a good freshwater color, like worms and probably crawdads and stuff like that. But uh, we'll see how it works. Top that off. Move on to the next one. I mean, it's a really nice color. I just haven't seen it used in salt water before. Plus, when you guys print these molds out yourselves, you guys can make whatever colors you want. All right, that's going to be it for this color. And I will see you guys when this hardens up. All right, so we'll crack this open again. And that actually looks pretty darn good, if I do say so myself. All right, it's time to slice and dice these tails up. So all we're gonna do is take our lure and just slice those little nubbins off the bottom. So now, the very final step, we're just gonna dab a... That's way too much. And just dab a little super glue in the eye socket and stick our eye in. And we're going to do that for the rest of these now. All right, so I'm going to do the rest of these off camera and I'll see you when we're all done. All right, so we are all done now. These came out pretty good, I think at least. We'll be trying these guys out for fluke next summer. And there's, there's a lot of inshore species these things will work for. Like I said before, this was kind of like a winged design. I didn't really have a plan. I just thought, oh, squid. But really, everything in the ocean eats squid almost. Plus, uh, I saw when I was researching this lure, a bunch of people are using something similar. Not Well, not really similar. They're using like a squid type thing for lake trout too. So it should work pretty good. So that's going to be it for this video. If you guys want to see a lure I haven't made yet, you should leave a comment down below and I will make it. Now you guys could just click away now or you could check out one of the other awesome lures I've made and get yourself another free lure. Thank you guys for watching.